Shalom, my name is Chaya Lester, sitting out here on the porch of my Nachlaot home in the heart of Jerusalem, framed by the trampoline. <laughs> Just to prove the point that you really can have it all. We really can live this incredible spiritual dream at the same time as having the trampoline. That is to say, having the mundane physical reality that we need and, and taking the fun fundamental physical reality and lifting it up to a higher spiritual place. I feel like that's really the formula of what Aliyah is all about. Aliyah, it means elevations, okay? So I'm so excited to be a part of this Aliyah festival, although I really wanna call it a manna festival because I just love that double entendre of manna and manifest that is Aliyah. Aliyah is about manifesting. It's about manifesting our personal dreams, our national dreams, our global dreams. It's about manifesting um, prophecies, you know, ancient prophecies suddenly manifest, come true. It's also about manna. It's about being fed by this incredible heavenly dew that sort of comes to the ground and feeds us and nourishes us on a whole other level, not just physical, but also spiritual. This is a land of being deeply nourished on all levels. So I want to share a couple of snippets of like my mundane life here and moments when that elevation has happened or when the light has sort of shined through the mundane and, and really cast a whole other spiritual shine on what's going on here and, and how to live um, in a way that really connects the spiritual and the mundane. I'll admit, I'm a spiritual freak, so that's, that's, my, that's my big anchor into this land is the incredible um, spiritual experiences I've had here and openings and um, it's it's really been a crucial part of my journey so one of the snippets that first comes to mind when I think of Aliyah is um, my husband and I had to we wanted to check out the idea of living in the land of Israel and so we did this sort of scouting it out trip we had to fly from California four-hour layover in New York City. I got off the plane in JFK, and the minute I, I stepped on the ground, I got violently ill, incredibly sick, ran to the bathroom, and spent literally three hours of my four-hour layover on those tiles of the JFK bathroom in a deep state of purge, okay? Just like deeply sick. When all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm sitting there beset by the most negative thinking you could imagine, just being like, oh, oh my God, how can we move to Israel? And it's how, what were we even thinking? And this is all so impractical and ridiculous as I'm lying on the tiles of the bathroom floor and, and just really in, in, in the deep, dark places of all my fears. When all of a sudden, from the other side of the door, there's a knock on my bathroom stall and a voice, a cheery voice comes out from the other side and she says, hello, my name is Alia Kotel. Alia Kotel. True, true story. And, and I hear that you're having a hard time. I'm wondering if I can help you. And I was like, Alia Kotel's on the other side of my, of my door, opened up and she brought me water and she rubbed my back and she got me through that last hour. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm getting on this plane and we're going to check this out because Aliyah Kotel manifested herself in the JFK airport just to get me through this. And it was so symbolic because this trip really was what allowed us to realize, yeah, we can do this. We can make this a reality. And I think that a big part of it was that voice from the other side of the door that voice from the other side of the veil that sometimes comes through and reminds us of something higher. Aliyah Kotel, you know, this the ability to transcend the, the, the physical facts on the ground and to take the physical facts on the ground and imbue them with something so much higher. So my next vignette also, I think, shows the same thing, which is um, once we did move to the land of Israel, I'm sitting and I'm stuck in a Jerusalem traffic jam, which is in the Middle East, in the middle of the summer, you do not want to be stuck in a Jerusalem traffic jam. And there I was, and I was kvetchy and hot. And, and thank God, out of nowhere, on the other side of all of my negative kvetchy thinking, as I was sweating in the back seat, came this voice in my head. And it said, wait a second, my soul has been waiting 2,000 years to be stuck in Jerusalem's traffic jams, to be stuck in the traffic jams of a repopulated Ir HaKodesh. After thousands of years of being flown and thrown all over the world, the Jewish people are now populating to the point of traffic jams, the streets of Jerusalem. 
And whenever I need it, I just have this little switch that I'm able to flip in my head of, wait a second, I'm sitting in the grocery line or I'm dealing with some bureaucratic mess or the taxes and I just remind myself, wait a second, I've been waiting 2,000 years to deal with this bureaucratic mess. And you, you have been waiting 2,000 years to be sitting there on the other side of this Zoom call uh, of the Aliyah Festival and and pondering this possibility for yourself, right? Pretty incredible. We've been waiting 2,000 years for this. So that mantra really sticks with me and, and allows me to sort of go in and whatever challenges I'm having, and I'm not gonna lie, I have my fair share of challenges here in the land of Israel, but then it's the ability to take those, those mundane hardships and then lift them up and imbue them with something so much higher that I have access to here so palpably here in the land of Israel. So just to end with a little bit of spoken word on this topic. So perhaps you're thinking about making the big move, thinking of bringing one of those nefesh benefesh charter game changer jumbo jets and you're struggling with the idea I bet worried about your bad accent or the high taxes or the 50 shekel job or the politics or blah 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 yes i know all of your shiny degrees may just gather dust as you bust your butt for some nonprofit or another and yes i know you're gonna miss your mother but listen to me stop it right there and remember we are walking miracles and prophecies come true we are rock stars literally rock stars rocking this rocky terrain up on the stage of jewish history finally made my bad accent is my badge of completion i wear it with distinction because making aliyah is a lifetime achievement just look at this valley of dry bones that we call home it's a restart up nation of bootstrappers who didn't give a scrap what reality said and excuse my language but god how we have battled the ages weathered every flavor of haters with the the original species endangered downtrodden forgotten and rooted out but all along we just keep being all about coming back home and messianic hope because it was written in the glittering literature of our DNA to believe that we could make our way back to this homestead back to this base breathless breadless hatless tactless history has kicked our atlas but we're back at last just the way we asked with bated breath over countless millions worth of prayers over 2,000 years. We're here because we believe we would be, because our prophets had visions and we were willing to bet our children on them, willing to give life and limb to come back in to this holy land. And look, just like that, we're finally back. So come on back. Thanks. <laughs>